Well, I got it all back together, and then the very last screw, I'm missing a piece. Well, guys, I have one step left to do on the top, <clears throat> and that's uh, to put the canvas uh, protectant on here. The waterproofer and I forgot to tell you the last time I'm using this uh, Protex uh, two-step thing actually there's three steps but I used the 303 on the cleaner and this is what I used on the, the, the die to get it nice and black the canvas restore got these bolts from Amazon um, and then this waterproofer is the last step the last step so I'll uh, set up the camera and dye stuff I was pretty impressed with so we'll see how the waterproofer does I'll get it put on and then uh, it's got to do the same thing dry for three hours and while I'm waiting on it to dry then I'll jump over here and work on the windows get the old incorrect windows out and I got the new windows and actually not new but windows from a salvage yard um, that they came in with junky old tinting on them so I'm gonna have to go down and get a heat gun and try to get all that tinting off before I install those. Here are the two windows that I got in. Um, super well packed. They came in a box that they wrapped the, both windows in that stuff and then they put it in the box and they put foam in there and it expanded and kept them in there. So no, I can't imagine there being any damage. So but I'll unwrap it and check it out. Then we'll start trying to get the tinting off. There's both windows that are clean without the tinting on there. So now time to go up there and see if we can get them installed. So that looks pretty good. Fitting it is fine. Opens up, goes back in right into the line here. <clears throat> so, I'd say that one's where it needs to be. Now we'll go get the other one out. And here's this side. So I think that is good. Next will be put on the uh, door panels <clears throat> and then all that's left is I got to put the uh, waterproofer on this back piece of fabric and the rest is just cleaning up and paint and waxing it. Should be ready to go. So now I'm going to go ahead and get this door panel put on the driver's or passenger side. There's still some glass that keeps falling out down in there so I'm going to suck that out first and then I'll put that plastic on. And then the panel, get all the wires hooked up, door handle, see if it works.
and also I got the uh, trunk button in let's see here that came in today so I'll go ahead and stick that on and uh, test it make sure the, the trunk pops up well, that worked easy so it's nice to be able to just push the button it work every single time so now I'll get that uh, button on just install the rest of the way and get the glove box put back in Okay, so to put that rubber piece on, I'm going to be using this two-sided tape uh, on one on the center part. I'm going to use this 3M weather strip adhesive uh, on the same areas that it was before. And then there's I had to buy this rivet gun because it has a it takes a big one big giant rivet, I guess, to keep that hole in the top. There's a little stud that goes down in this hole right here. And so that I'm sure that holds a lot of um, sideways motion and all sorts of stuff. So that big rivet holds, goes in there, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but it goes in that hole right there into the actual steel. So we'll get this started. It's the next day and this is what I had to uh, how I had to get this thing clamped down so it would um, stick last night so we're ready to take that off and uh, then I'll uh, get the top put back up and finish waterproof in the back side of it three hours and the back is nice and dry shut the lid here so next I have to put the door panel on on the driver's side well, I got it all back together and then the very last screw I'm missing a piece looks like this piece right here is supposed to, supposed to be another one right here so somewhere between here and the paint shop and back and who knows where that piece fell out so the screw has nothing to go into so I'm gonna go look at the old um, scrap door and see if it's got that piece on it still in the scrap pile if that's got it in there yep right there let's see if I can get it out uh, holding the camera. Alright, so there's the piece. 
I don't know how that fell out because it wasn't that easy to get out. So. everything back together in the car I put this tarp all over the thing I'm gonna go ahead and buff out this hood since I uh, already have it mostly ready it's nice and smooth but it's still got some swirl marks and stuff in it so I'm gonna try to get those out and then it'll be time to take it in and get it inspected Alright, here we go on the maiden voyage. Gonna go get this thing inspected. It's all ready, back together. Get my lovely wife into the car. And hopefully it passes inspection. I'll tell you one thing, the air works really good. Nice and cool inside. We'll put the top down later. So this is the first time that we drove the car with the top down. And we were just having a good time here. My wife can't get the smile off her face, as you can see. But uh, we were checking crews, and it worked, and going through the gears, upshifting and downshifting to make sure the transmission was good, and everything worked just great. There's no, couldn't see anything that doesn't work right on the car. So that's great. Official drive of the Solstice, and everything worked great. And all we could think about the whole trip was where are we going to take this thing? What trips could we take? All right, guys, it's time for the price reveal. Okay, the original purchase price of the car at Copart was $2,150. Taxes and fees, $754. Paint, $500. All the salvage parts I brought, I bought the quarter panel, the gigantic chunk that you saw, the door, the top, all that was $935. The windows, $130, the second time I got them. The uh, switch for the trunk, $13. The cup holder, I don't even know if I have videos of the cup holder part, but that's another story. $15. And the uh, waterproofer and dye I used on the top to get it black again was about $50. So if you add all that up, it's $4,547. So what do you think about that? Was that a good deal? Especially you Solstice Forum guys. I've got a 08 Solstice with $4,547 in it. I've got it 22,000 miles and a clean title. Is that a good deal? I think it is, just because it's a cool car and it's fun. And it's fun. Um, my wife and I get to go have a lot of fun trips on it and it didn't cost much money. So let me know what you think in the comments. Hey guys, I almost forgot the most important part of the build, the wall of fame. And yes, you may have guessed, this is what's gonna go up there. If you don't know what this is about, go back and look at the first episode of the Solstice Rebuild. And you'll get it. If you don't know what this is about, go back and look at the first or second episode of the 2013 Mustang Rebuild. So, I've got two things going on the Wall of Fame. What's going to be next? 
Okay, we finally got out to the road where we can go through the gears. It's at 30 mile an hour. Very tight steering. Steering is like you move it a quarter inch and you move a wide way as across the lane. I guess that's good going around corners. I'm just not used to go from an F-250 to this. Do you have any questions about this week's video? Do you have an answer to one of the questions we asked? Leave a comment down below and always remember, don't retire it if you can rebuild it. See you guys next week. After this video, make sure to check us out on Instagram, where we post behind the scenes photos, sneak peeks, giveaways, and information for future projects. Thanks so much guys for tuning in and watching this week's episode of Rebuild It. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any awesome content. Have a good one.